5G America is first working on 5G technology for over four years. So we started out over four years ago with our technical recommendations. Uh, we have moved on to what's called regulatory policy recommendations, and then actually a spectrum policy recommendation. So um, in the entire you know ecosystem, we're working with you know both operators, vendors, um, as well as the governments in the Americas region to you know really find a way to make sure we progress 5G at the quickest rate possible. Um, those are the key areas that 5G Americas works on, and typically um, we do a lot of that work through our technical white papers or even our uh, white papers on regulatory policy. Yeah, what we've learned is that um, each of the, the, the mobile operators in the United States, for instance, are taking initially a different approach to how they're going to be uh, moving forward with 5G. Um, you've seen that with uh, Verizon using millimeter wave for going after the home-based market. You'll see it with AT&T uh, having launched uh, what would be considered a, a, a puck hotspot strategy with millimeter wave. Uh, you'll see it with uh, in 2019 with T-Mobile uh, utilizing their 600 megahertz spectrum uh, for uh, mobile 5G. And then you'll see it uh, for Sprint, which will be uh, using their 2.5 gigahertz spectrum to actually go after, again, the, the mobile uh, market. So initially, what we've learned is each of the operators is going to be uh, starting out from different points as far as 5G. So there's one standard for 5G. It's being developed at uh, the third generation partnership project. But what we've learned is that operators really need to look at their spectrum assets, um, their cell siting uh, processes and, and what they have in their network densification of modes and then also look at what markets they're going to go after uh, with 5G because there's a lot of applications and so forth. So um, we're working with operators and vendors throughout the ecosystem to share that information and make sure everyone understands that. But the key challenges and obviously the opportunities to making this happen are network densification, mm -hmm. so getting uh, uh, many more cell sites out or using small cells uh, for 5G uh, to increase your network density. And then also spectrum allocation and spectrum auctions. So you know, we say at 5G Americas, the two key ingredients to the successful role of 5G are spectrum allocation and auctions and uh, uh, network densification. So streamlining your cell site processes for your governments. If you look at the growth rate of how fast 5G is going to be deployed, uh, there's many forecasts that have a billion connections of 5G by 2023, and by 2024 you're looking at uh, 1.5 billion. So it's going to be a very fast pace. We're at the tip of the iceberg for deployments. Um, you're seeing uh, the U.S. is a leader. But you're also seeing a le leadership in the Asia-Pacific region with China. South Korea and Japan, but all in all, you're seeing um, this you know, great race to bring 5G deployments out, and the two key ingredients are definitely spectrum and network densification. So smart cities is such a great opportunity, you know, both from what we consider the use case uh, for 5G, but also for a business case for 5G. And what we need to move to is more of an embracement by the, the, the city uh, regulations and city uh, leadership to understand how important 5G can be to the citizens of their, whether it's a city or a municipality. Uh, 5G is going to be looking at addressing uh, transportation, healthcare, education, and it's going to provide millions and millions of jobs throughout the United States and the rest of the world if you look at its kind of overall effect. 5G is not just about a, you know a transaction like when we looked at our smartphone you would it'd be kind of transactional you'd be looking at websites or doing different things in social media 5g is more transformational and once cities see that transformational aspect of it and embrace it they'll understand that we are wanting to as an industry go into their cities and make them smarter so that they can serve their citizens much better so uh, smart city is a great opportunity. We just need to continue to work closely with those cities and municipalities to make this happen. And part of that is allowing us to streamline those processes for cell sites.